Hello and welcome back to my next installment of the uh, command uh, scenario editor tutorials. Uh, I'm sorry if I sound terrible. I uh, have the misfortune of currently having both a sinus infection and an ear infection, so not fun. <laughs> so, of course, we go in, we create a new scenario, and we're going to go over a few things, mainly on the editor tab here. Uh, and I should note that if you wanted to uh, take a look at existing scenarios in the scenario editor, I could even find my scenarios here uh, and load a selected scenario in the editor mode, turn off God's Eye View, turn on God's Eye View, and you can see that all this stuff has already been made. So if I wanted to see how the enemy behaves, I could even click on their side and see their mission, which in this case is a sea control patrol, more on those later. Uh, you could see what doctrine they're using, how they're going to be fighting, and a bunch of other things. So we're going to go back to our own scenario here. Let's get out of the Middle East. I'm sure there'll be enough scenarios uh, created on the whole Syria thing soon. Uh, I already did one, and uh, well, let's just say that uh, Syria is capable of shooting down tomahawks. Whether they did or not is a matter of contention. I haven't seen any evidence suggest they have. Uh, maybe they pressed the wrong button, who knows. <laughs> so anyway, as I said before, the first thing we need to do when creating a scenario is making a side. So I'm going to make two, op4 and blue4, because why not? Hostile and hostile. So if we're creating a scenario, there's a few things that we could consider here. Scenario time and duration. So when does the scenario, what is the current time? When does the scenario start? And how long does it last for? So it will always default to one day, but it depends on what your scenario is doing. Let's just say you don't want airstrikes to reload. You know, you might want to give like two hours to do the scenario. Uh, but if, let's just say, you want aircraft to be able to rearm and re -sortie, then you might want to give them more time. Uh, then complexity and difficulty. What I would say is, if you're doing this rating, I would do a playthrough of your scenario before you do this and determine how difficult and complex you think it is, seeing it all the way through. Uh, generally, for complexity, though, it's how many things do you need to worry about at once, and what actions will you take that will determine the outcome of the scenario, like actual options. For example, do I attack one thing, do I attack another? If I attack it with bombers, then the bombers aren't available. If I attack it with cruise missiles, yada, 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 then I have less cruise missiles. So it's you know, how much are you thinking about the scenario? How much do you need to think about the scenario? How difficult is it? How easy is it for the enemy to win? So now, if we go to Op4, I'm going to give them a base. United States, Nevada, Nellis. We'll give them Nellis. So now, if we switch back to Blue 4, they will by default see Nellis if I just hit enter. So now, what if I created facility? What if I created a Patriot battery here? 
turn this back on to blue for? They do not see it, and the reason they don't see it is because it's not auto discoverable. The reason I added that here is to show what God's eye view is. So if I hit Control and V, brings up God's eye view, and I could see all hidden enemy units. Now I find this immensely useful in creating a scenario. Like let's just say I wanted to put my bombers around this area over here, then I know I'm doing so outside of SAM range, but they're coming into SAM range. Uh, obviously the switch to tab, self-explanatory, switch sides. So you go from one side to the other. Uh, obviously you'll be doing a lot of that when you're working on stuff. Briefing, so I recommend that you have a plan before you go into the scenario editor or you just come up with a briefing on the fly after you messed around. But I wouldn't write it in here. I would write it in like Word or something like that and copy it over. Uh, but basically, you know, just a briefing explaining what is expected of that faction and how to be successful at it. Uh, all the scenarios that are that come with command have some sort of a briefing in them. Uh, edit scoring. So we haven't set up scoring yet. So it's going to default to negative 100 and 100 being going from triumph to major defeat. Uh, there are a lot of ways you could implement scoring uh, that we're not going to go over right this second, but this can definitely be done that you could set it so that you gain or lose points for destroying things or losing stuff or not accomplishing objectives or accomplishing objectives by a certain time or any sort of thing like that. Uh, the weather. Now, I haven't messed with the weather tab, but there are a few things to keep in mind. Uh, I believe it says it, so I'm going to put some A10s here on Nellis. So if we go to ready an aircraft up, Time of day and weather are both considerations for certain things. Limited all weather and all weather. I guess, uh, but if we look at, say, a JDAM as GPS, it's saying it's an all weather uh, type of attack because, you know, it's going to have a satellite link either way. Uh, where it says day and night, or sorry, all weather, clear weather. So this basically says it only works in clear weather, and this is a paveway. So if there's a thunderstorm, it's not going to be effective to use this. Limited all weather, I'm honestly not sure. Now, I know in particular, uh, when you're looking into this sort of a thing, Mavericks, there are, there's the D version, there's the G version here, the K version. There are tons of different types of Mavericks, and each one of them uh, has a different seeker head. So that is something to keep in mind. You can make a scenario interesting by making or by setting weather. Uh, another thing uh, to keep in mind is setting a scenario features and settings. So in a rush and you're going to make a scenario that lasts 10 minutes, instead of detailing magazines and everything at naval, naval or air bases, other than of course getting an accurate damage model, you can just click right there to uh, have uh, unlimited ammo. Uh, detailed gunfire control, uh, I believe, is something to do with 
radar radar fire control for gunnery. Then there's aircraft damage, which basically aircraft have a chance to be damaged by certain weapons instead of outright destroyed. And in that case, they can attempt to limp back to base. Now, of course, if they make it back to base, it might take them uh, several times longer to turn around because they might have to repair damage. So basically, it's warning me that this feature is compatible with previous versions of Command. Then there's cargo operations. I have not messed with it. Honestly, the only of these that I've messed with is railguns and high-velocity projectiles, which is pretty cool. Uh, there's a zone wall model that's got a ton of that stuff. So if you're using the hypothetical zoom walt models, for example, you'll need to turn that on. Honestly, if you want to learn more about cargo operations in particular, uh, look at Belugan's stream. He can cover quite a bit of that. Now, we've already talked about uh, unit actions, adding aircraft. You can also do the same for docked boats, uh, particularly for docks and piers. Uh, adding units, obviously, we add units all the time, move units, I went over that. Uh, import and export, we went over. Alright, so now we have <clears throat> a basic understanding of where everything is, it would be time to go over, say, how to uh, create a bad guy force and make it behave the way you want it to. So let's take Syria, for example, and we're going to make Syria. So I'm going to take the import file. And I'm just going to put in everything. Why not? Exactly what I said don't do. <laughs> so we have imported Syria. We've got a ton of air defenses here. And we want to have a doctrine set to tell them how to behave. So, use nuclear weapons. I would hope they don't have it. <laughs> uh, so, rules of engagement. Generally speaking, it defaults to tight, which is fire only at contacts that are previously identified as hostile. Uh, hold is basically manual fire, which means the AI won't do a damn thing. And free means They'll shoot at anything that's not friendly. They'll still identify targets, though. Uh, and that is something that you could set where you know that anything in that area is hostile. You can set it so that anything that comes in through that area becomes red. <laughs> and then obviously, ignore plotted course when attacking so they could break off. Engage ambiguous targets, pessimistic, optimistic, or ignore. So basically, if there's a little bit of target ambiguity and they don't know exactly where the target is, do they fire? If they're not sure they could hit it, that would be basically do they waste ammo uh, when they see a contact that they're not sure the exact location of it. And engage opportunity targets. So... By default, this is no. Now, I'll give you an example of what engaged opportunity targets would do if you turned it on to create a Burke. 
Let's, uh, let's do a submarine this time, Ohio. And we're going to put in 154 tomahawks. So I'm going to hit spacebar to see everything. And we're going to set Syria as hostile. And I am going to set engage opportunity targets. Now keep this in mind if you set this for the AI. So we just decided we're going to fire off all of our weapons at opportunity targets. Which, by the way, are all these SAM systems as well, are considered basically opportunity targets means if it's in range I'm shooting it. So these 154 tomahawks we could have used for shooting air bases, could have used for specific targets, nope. Just shooting and engaging opportunity targets. And just in light of recent events I just want to see this one through to be honest. <laughs> I just wonder if Syria could shoot down 73 of these. Not with that SAM battery, it can't. Wait, did I turn on their radars? Did I turn on their radars? Crap, I don't even know. Oh, I didn't turn on their radars. That, that could explain that. Oops. Oh, so one of the things you will want your side to do, potentially for the bad guys, would be turn on their radars. Now there are ways to script that with Lua and other things. But for the most part, just leaving radars on is fine, in my opinion at least. Alright, so Syria's woken up and they're going to start trying to engage missiles now. Looks like a pretty dead airbase. <laughs> so anyway, let's see what Syria would have done if uh, if 150 Tomahawks went towards them and they were able to shoot back. While that's going, uh, let's continue on doctrine since they're going to take a while to get there anyway. Ignore MCOM when under attack. So basically, MCOM settings right here. Don't use radar, don't use sonar, and don't use ECM. And let it, basically, they're passive. So if a unit is under attack and it has a jammer, it's going to start using its offensive ECM to make it harder for itself to be shot down. It's almost like defending itself. It will turn on its radar if it knows missiles are incoming. Then there are some other settings like how do you want torpedoes to be handled. So practical range is probably a good idea to set. Uh, it's what they think is going to be a, a good chance of a kill. Let's move this over here so we can watch. Oops. 
There we go. So then there are some other things like refuel, unwrap, air operations tempo, surge and sustain. The difference is how many times do you want the ability to sortie in a day? Do you want it that an aircraft takes 20 hours to make to rearm or, or do you want it to take uh, say six hours to rearm with a strike package? Quick turnaround. Basically do you want the quick turnaround, do you want the ability to do a quick turnaround type mission? Uh, basically fuel state pre-plan, bingo fuel terminate mission, uh, you could say basically at certain fuel states just say I don't have enough and return to base, fuel state return to base, so basically, if one unit in the group uh, runs out of fuel, do you want them to terminate, or do you want that one to break off and go back? Weapon state pre-planned, use loadout setting. We could set this, so basically, mission-specific weapons have been expended, disengage immediately. So I'll give you an example. Let's just say that you have a pair of hornets and they fire harpoon missiles at their target uh, and they're set to mission specific weapons which would be the anti-ship missiles so they fire both of those and they also have two AMRAM they're not going to stick around and try to use those two AMRAM on something they're going to get out of there and disengage immediately because they fired their payload uh, So basically, Winchester, mission-specific weapons have been expended, allow targets of opportunity with air-to-air -air guns. So, say you had fighters who were shooting down bombers, or something that you were not particularly worried about, or let's say even if it was, I don't know, F-15s, and you were facing overwhelming majority of MiG-21s where you just didn't have enough AMRAM to deal with them, then they could close in for Sidewinder and gunshots. And you're probably not going to lose very many of them because they're still immensely superior maneuverability and speed and everything-wise. So you can go in and read all of these. Uh, a lot of them are do you want members of formation to break off and return to base on their own? Or do you want the formation to stay together? And depending on what you're trying to do, there are advantages and disadvantages of both. Um, weapon state return to base. Oh, one other thing I wanted to mention with weapons, in particular for sort of like... Uh, uh, heavily planned uh, bombing runs. Let's just say that you have a bomber that's coming in this way. It's using these mountains to mask itself and it's hitting and running away. You might want to mess around with these settings and find one that does not cause it to return to base because you might set up uh, waypoints. Let's just see if I could aircraft F-15 so I'm going to put an F-15 strike eagle here with I don't even know what bomb that is it doesn't matter because it's not actually going in I'm going to pause it here but I'm just making a hypothetical mission here and close this for a second so let's just say that my mission is to come to here here I'm sorry, wait, let's go here, low, ah, stop it. So I'm going to set it to low altitude here, 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 and let's just say I want to drop my payload here and return specifically this way. So 
this entire time I want it to be low altitude, but then at this point I want to set afterburners. So if it got to this point to drop its bomb and it basically then just RTB'd, it would then default back to going at 50,000 feet or whatever max altitude is and running away at military speed. Now with the SAMs here, that would be a bad idea because these SAMs would then say, oh, you want to fly high and you're in my range. Well, congratulations, you just got shot down. <laughs> and just going military speed isn't good enough because you want to get out of there quick. Back to Doctrine. So, use SAMs in ASUW mode. So, let's go to Syria. So, in this case, Syria has just bought a Moskva ship from Russia, or Russia's just put it here for whatever reason. Oh, and uh, this, by the way, is uh, <laughs> one of the reasons that I find it funny when people say we don't have an anti-ship missile. Right, let's give it a burk. So I'm going to put just SAMs on it, just to demonstrate this. So this right here has a bunch of weapons, none of which are anti-ship weapons. We're going to set the doctrine to I'm going to set the doctrine for them to just engage opportunity targets so I don't have to tell them to do anything. If they see something, they'll engage it. Side doctrine. Did I say it? Yeah, I did. set this guy to use SAMs in surface to air I'm sorry surface to air missiles in ASUW mode so this guy to flank because I don't have all day any minute now he should be in range. There we go. Any shot at me. So I'm going to shoot back. So I'm going to shoot SM2s back at him. He's 20 miles away. Wait, did I, oh no, I'm dumb. I accidentally, it looks like, shot. Oh, never mind, no. I shot them at the Moskva. <laughs> I saw them going and I thought, did I just fire them all at the missile? Oops. <laughs> just 
turn on this mode so we could see them coming in, but all of these missiles heading straight towards the Moskva. I mean, you can see here they're not doing a lot of damage. One of them got intercepted. 38% after three hits. But I mean, they're a fast missile. They're not surface skimming though. But the point is that they can definitely uh, be used to take out a uh, take out uh, surface threats. And there, that's a dead enemy cruiser. Now, of course, since we had set engage opportunity targets, uh, it decided to pretty much fire more of them, <laughs> or these ESSMs. Nope, they're all uh, SM2s, I guess. Where are they? Yeah, they're all SM2s. Oh, nope, some of them are ESSMs. Anyway. <laughs> I definitely want to take off that engage opportunity targets on your side so you can control where stuff goes. <laughs> But I would recommend that you do it on the enemy side as well. Uh, but one thing that is useful is even though that's been set, could show again by putting some more. Let's try the multi-mission ones this time. I believe they have uh, defensive countermeasures on them actually. Go here and it's under sensors. So these missiles actually have defensive ECM built into them. So now I could go in and I could set the side doctrine for this one unit, I believe. So this is just the doctrine and ROE for this Ohio class. Oops. And now he's going to do his thing again. Now more on side doctrine. Uh, you can mess around with this. This is weapons release authorization. So I could go in and say if there's a land target and you don't know what it is, fire eight tomahawks at it. I might not want to do that because I might run out of tomahawks. Or I could say do not use tomahawks against hardened structures because it'll take too many of them and I want my tomahawks uh, firing at things they can damage and kill. Or I could say that I want my multi-mission tomahawks only firing on ships by saying to all types of land targets, don't shoot at it. Or let's just say I want to use SAMs in an anti-ship role, but I don't want to use SM6s in that role because they're a very high quality and high expense SAM system. I'd hate to try to use them uh, for taking out a ship unless I absolutely had to. So what you could do there is say TLAMDs you can fire just by me saying attack that target, but my TACTOMs, I, uh, I thought there was a, uh, a way to manually set it that way, never mind. Oh, maybe I'm imagining something. Anyway, another thing you could do especially with ships. Uh, so I'm sure you're all aware by now how good ships are at 
surviving uh, multiple missiles coming in at them. If, let's just say, you see an enemy ship here, uh, surface combatant, I could say use the target's missile defense value, use twice as many weapons as the target's missile defense value, use four times the amount, so basically overwhelm it. This ship must die and we will use as many weapons as we need to to get it down. Or let's just say it's an older ship and its missile defense value you don't think is accurate. You could use a half or a quarter or you could just say fire two rounds and that'll do it or they'll shoot it down but that's all you're telling it to do. Now the last thing that we could talk about now before going on into missions, which we have to do in order to set up missions, is reference points. Which conveniently enough are in the reference point tab. So if we go to add reference points, now let's just say that you can use reference points for a number of different things. One, I could specify this area here. I can lock these reference points. Oops. Um, rename selected reference points. So I'm resume. Okay. Is there a control R? Okay, so Okay, so control R here and I'm going to set patrol area So now, I can define uh, my patrol area. Just simply so the player knows that this is the patrol area. Or let's just say that I find a contact here. Or say, I find a contact and target ambiguity says it's somewhere around here. So all I'm going to do is rename this one here, target popped up. And let's lock these now. So basically I know that a target popped up on my sensors there, and I'm not sure where he is now, but that was an area of concern, so it's noted. Um, then there's no navigation zones and exclusion zones, uh, and there's quite a few things we could do with those. Probably don't have time. No, I definitely don't have time to cover them today. But I will say is I'm sure you've ever, you've played Command before, where you see enemies coming in and they're just yellow, and you know that any sensible person would say nothing would be flying except for the enemy, so we're going to attack the enemy uh, and just start shooting because. Who else would be flying formations of multi-role fighters at us? You can make an exclusion zone and then set it so that all those units become hostile. Uh, that's going to require uh, another uh, lesson, but we'll go over that. But uh, next time I think we'll be covering missions.
and uh, then we could also, if we have time, that time cover exclusion zones. Alright, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later.